Hi Earthings, I'm Elle and thank you so much for tuning in to Just Ironic. As you may have seen from the title of this video, today I'll be talking about how Mexican cultural habits can actually help you become zero waste. If you're wondering, I am Mexican, I am just very Eurocentric, I don't know what happened in the bloodline, but I just came out a little bit more whiter, but I definitely am Mexican American, both my parents were raised in Mexico and then they moved over to the United States when they were in their 20s. So I definitely have lived in a very traditional Mexican household my whole life. My first language is Spanish. So in this video, I'll go into detail about what those habits are of Mexicans that will help you be more zero waste. So the first way I would say that Mexicans are cultural environmentalists, which is just a fancy word for saying that they're very environmentally friendly just based on their culture, is by turning off the lights and the heaters and the air conditioners in their house. It's very much emphasized that as soon as you can turn it off or as soon as you don't really technically need it, you have to turn it off and basically this is saving money and also saving us from using the item too much because if you use it more obviously it's going to get used out more and um, I don't know if this has anything to do with it but I've grown to love sweaters so much more because I've always been told to put on a cardigan or put on a sweater just to keep yourself a little bit warmer when the house is a little bit colder and also it's normal to have fans versus air conditioners in your house that may be different for every Mexican household but for what I've experienced and what I've seen my other relatives live out is that they just always have fans and they try to do everything where as soon as they leave the house or the or the room they just turn everything off so the second tip I have is reusing paper grocery bags into book covers now this is something that's very creative and I didn't really find that out until my mom did it she like whipped out a grocery bag and she cut it up and she made a whole book cover on it just know that if you do this obviously the book covers will be made out of paper so they can get teared ripped and apart in a couple of words so just know that but if you do put it on tightly and you tape it on I think it is very realistic and cheap and zero waste way of making book covers especially books that you may want to keep private or you just want to protect a little bit more and if you want me to make a video on that please let me know I'll be happy to do so with a lot of different books and sizes so you'll get to know how to do it it's super easy and it's super fast to do and you can customize it in whichever way you want so yeah just let me know step number three is actually something that may be more commonplace than I originally thought but you can always use plastic bags to line the plastic garbage cans that you have lying around in the house. So if you have any plastic bags lying around and you want to keep your trash cans cleaner and you want a more simplified way of taking out your trash, you can always line them with a plastic bag which you would already have from the stores. And so it'd be free and easy to do as long as the trash can obviously fits the plastic bag. The next tip is to convert mason jars into drinking cups. My parents are super like into jams and into like these cool like glass uh, sealed products and they can actually be converted into drinking glasses and I think this has become a trend for a lot of Millennials where they like drink out of the mason jars to illustrate that there's zero waste or to not use plastic in their cups and I think you can also buy these in the dollar store there's like mason jars everywhere now because of that new trend but if you want to be more zero waste you can obviously buy like mason jar sealed strawberries or like jams or peanut butter I've seen too and then repurpose it. So the next option I have is to actually use portable grocery carts. You may not have heard of this or may maybe you have but I've definitely seen them being used by Mexican elderly people. I haven't necessarily seen them being used by the younger generation or by millennials even but I think they're really great in storing a lot of food if you're going to a grocery run or if you're in a flea market and have nowhere to really store them all in your hands and I think these are really great and putting a lot of stuff in them and they'll keep it safe from like the external environment. I think they range from like 30 to 40 dollars. I'll put some links down below so you can check them out on different websites. But they're usually sold in Mexican stores so just make sure you to look out for those or you can ask staff in Mexican like grocery stores that you're interested in buying one and they'll probably know where they're at. So the next tip I have is to hand wash your clothing. This may sound a little bit tedious and a little bit of a labor intensive practice to do. Especially if you want to be zero waste with minimal effort. I think that 
washing your clothing in the Mexican culture is something that's seen as preserving the clothing and also saving money on water and electricity. So a lot of people do take the time to wash their clothing by hand and then they air dry them so it's naturally dried outside in the backyard. But if that's not a realistic option, I would definitely say keep going on the laundry. But um, yeah, this is just an option for you to be aware of. Now this next tip is something that I've noticed especially through my dad and it's been repairing broken items. Now this may sound a little bit straightforward but I have noticed that a lot of other people just kind of throw everything away in the landfill while Mexicans just hold on to it or even go out of their way to look for stuff in other people's trash that they can reuse. I would definitely recommend that you don't see broken items as trash and then automatically without really thinking send it into the landfill. I think if you try to repair broken items it will be something that will not only save you money because you're not buying something new but it'll also make you a little bit more creative because you have to think through like what's wrong with it, how can I fix it, what are the parts that need refixing. So it does take a lot of creativity and logical thinking and also effort because you're gonna you're gonna have to take time to fix it. So I would definitely recommend that option. And in the same tandem, I would definitely recommend mending and fixing your old clothing. I think it's something that's pretty normal for you to consider like, oh, it's ripped. I can't wear this anymore. Oh, it has a stain. Like, I don't know what to do with it. But I think the beautiful thing about clothing is that it can be anything if you want it to be. And what I mean is that with any sort of creativity and with simple materials like a needle and thread, you can really create old clothing and something that you would never think could be possible. This has recently been seen in all the upcycling TikToks online and it's also been seen on Instagram where people are trying to reinvent what they already have in their closet because they can't go out shopping. And as a Mexican, I've always seen my mom sew and mend all this different clothing from her past. So if you want to upcycle, practice it. It doesn't have to be perfect within the first try. And if you don't have any ideas, I think being on Pinterest is a great idea. And also mending your clothing is something that I would definitely recommend. It actually can be as simple as putting a patch on or over the hole. Um, it can be like embroidering a flower design over the stain. It can be so many different things, so it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be, you know, just one way. It's very up to you what you want to do. And now the last tip is to use cans for flower beds. This may sound a little bit odd, but I think a really eclectic and unique way to start uh, a flower bed is to actually put them in like cans. So cans can be like pecans or tomato cans or corn cans and then you just take the lid off and you put the dirt and the flower that you want. You can keep it indoors or you can transfer it outside whenever you want. It's whatever you want with the plant, but it's a really great way for you to use what's already in your kitchen and to reuse it and that way you don't have to throw it away. Instead, it's something that can really create a lot of value for your life. And you can paint it, you can paint the exterior so it's not just silver, instead it can be like purple or blue. Just, you know, just paint it, you can customize it, you can put the name of your plant on it. And yeah, that's basically it for the video. I know this video is very vague in the sense of what you can do with different items, but it's just for you to get an idea of what you can do. It's nothing that is too hard. And if you haven't noticed, these Mexican cultural habits are very open-ended. It's something that you just have to be creative about and it doesn't have to be just one way. Mexicans have the same habits but they embody it in different ways and that's the beauty of different cultures and of different people, you know. We all have a different way of doing things even if we're in the same culture. So yeah, appreciate these habits and hopefully you'll take up one of these ideas so you can become more zero waste in order to help our mama earth because she really is being overburdened right now with all the trash that we have in the world and you can do a lot of amazing things if you try. Peace and love and thank you for watching. Bye.